Oh, we can actually now move forward to the uh, last session of the Startup Toaster that's about to start. We have uh, five more companies pitching here with us today. Uh, we said their names before. I'm going to repeat them loud again before calling on stage our judges. So we have now pitching ZZ Photo, Help Race, Force, Hive, and GP. Always the same format, two minutes plus five minutes Q&A from the judges. Judges on stage, we have here Bas Gotska. Hello again, Bas. Long time no see, really. Very long time. Yeah. And then we the have time, here right? Eric Anderson. So thank you very much, judges, for being here for the last uh, session. So first company pitching is ZZ Photo. I'd like to invite the speaker here on stage. If he's around, otherwise we can switch to the second one. ZZ Photo, anyone around? Raise your hand. Is it you? Hi. Welcome. I'll, I'll uh, give you the microphone and the remote to change the slides. You have two minutes and then five minutes Q&A. Hello. I would like to tell you... I will stand here. I would like to tell you about this photo. This photo is a solution that helps uh, to organize all memories and photos on computers. Already, we have already around 2,000 uh, users uh, from from more than 20 countries, uh, and we have great feedback. And um, what do we do? Uh, the problem is uh, that we, all of us, uh, take photos on our mobile, on, uh, on cameras, and then when we come home, we upload everything to our computer and then forget forever. This photo helps to work with the, with the photos, to organize them, to find duplicates, we also can uh, identify people on the, on the pictures. We can also identify pets on the pi pictures. We find scanned documents. Uh, we, find, uh, we, can, we have different algorithms that help to find uh, your travel, organize your travel photos like made on a beach or in, while skiing or in the forest. We identify nature. Uh, we have different viewing modes, uh, we have private mode, we can, where we you could hide all pictures that you don't want to be seen from anyone. We have also smart search, for example, if you want to have to find all pictures made last year from travel with no mother-in-law on them, that's easy with this photo. Our audience is uh, all over the world, but mainly in North America and Western Europe. Active travelers or young parents who make a lot of photos of their kids. It could be anyone, actually. We have a team of uh, eight developers, eight, uh, eight people in-house, uh, developers and marketing and product manager. Our plan is uh, now we have a Windows desktop uh, solution, but uh, web version and mobile version is yet to come already. We're trying to work on it. Uh, how do we sell? We have a free version that is limited uh, by different, by tax, by persons, by timeline that you can see. And also we sell uh, as uh, unlimited version via our website. We are all already available in, on, on different markets to download. That's all. I don't know if I have a lot more time. It's fine. It's fine. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, first simple question. Why is it ZZ photo me? Is there something like ZZ or? Uh, no, it's just, uh, uh, it just um, nice, nice. How, you can, how you can nicely and easily tell that you have uh, ZZ photo. It's OK. And I, I maybe missed it, or maybe it's not in the presentation, but is it actually stored somewhere in the cloud, everything? Or? No, it works, uh, it works with your photos that are stored on your computer already, okay. but we also uh, scan uh, photos not only from computer but from specific folders. If user is already using Dropbox or Google Drive, we can work with them. If uh, later we will uh, work with more clouds as well. Okay, I have two small comments. Firstly, it's 
Where does, for instance, something like Flickr? Uh, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Flickr are also uh, yeah, okay. allowed to, to use. Um, when I use my desktop Mac, all that stuff is there. V visual recognition, uh, smart search. Uh, is there really something that you're solving that is not done inside the photo viewer or whatever it's called? Uh, we have, uh, we have a compli photo? Fo complicated uh, search. Uh, for example, you can um, uh, not only find all pictures by tags, uh, but also you can uh, in exclude some tags. For example, you want to find all, pre all pictures with your family when you were on travel or where you were not on travel, like this. As I know, iPhoto doesn't do this. Uh, but again, in that Mac version, there's also a pinpointing of geolocation connected to the photos, just as on your iPhone. Just wondering, is that really the, the, the biggest differentiator or do you have other bits that are... For example, duplicates, because uh, iPhoto doesn't work with, with duplicates, we will tell you that you have the same photo storaged in five different folders. And do you want to delete the one you don't need? I, I don't think that you can find it in Mac. And then my last quick question about this so far. Of That's, course. And I think a lot of people who are still using iPhones, uh, like me, I'm an old guy, but um, uh, basically the storage issue on the iPhone, is there something where you could solve that, that you exported all those photos? Because with iCloud, it's not possible to, for me at least, well, you can select folders, but then you need to put it in folders. You, you mean uh, to storage all photos on some cloud? Well, yes, but kind of taking it out of your iPhone. I've got 40 or 50 gigabytes of unnecessary photos. It is up to user. He could, he can do it, and he could uh, follow up to our uh, But I didn't see it in your but functionality. So do you say, OK, you can select that you want 40% of your iPhone photos to go into a? Uh, just a small remark. This is a Windows solution for Windows, not, from, uh, not for Mac. the PC. I saw that. Will there be yes, a win? Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Okay, for so our entire discussion is yes, it's <laughs> less like, relevant. Yes, uh, it's like SaaS, it's like service. Okay, it's good. With for, for now, we have Windows. We are also working on uh, web version, and mobile version is also yet to come. And okay. then yeah. later we will... But very long development lead time, right? I saw something 2016, you're finally done with the mobile version. Uh, you have many programmers. Is it so hard? Is it what... Is, what is it so mean? hard? Because I saw the... The timeline of the roadmap. Yes. Wasn't it saying like 2016 you're finally done with the mobile version? Or uh, yes, like this, because now we will work as mobile version. Or but that's like one and a half years away. In internet, everything goes seven times faster. So <laughs> can't you go? For, no, then. Okay, we'll try. Okay. Anyway, I've been uh, asking too many questions. So. We'll try. We'll try. So my question is about users. So you're yes. operating the freemium model. Uh, what are your What are your customers saying? or your future customers saying? How are you going to convert these freemium users into paying customers? How to, to make them pay for our, OK. Uh, we, what, what do you, can you repeat? What do you exactly So you mean? have 2,000 yes. users right now. Yes. How many of them are paying customers? Uh, we also are start selling two months. So uh, now we uh, circulate the free version. And this, is, uh, this version is limited by, by functions by features, so they, if they like it, they, sh they, they have to buy a full version because it's, you know, like only 20 tags or a timeline when you can see your photos in timeline, on map or in collections. It is limited uh, to uh, two years, but if you have photos like made five years ago or 10 years ago, you, you, you need to buy a ver full version to see them, to use it completely. And your customer feedback, how many of them are active? How many of them love the service? Uh, again, we we uh, use only we are selling only for two months, for now. So there is no statistics like when oh, because of course when you download the application and when you start using it, you are all the time using it. But then you you open it any time when you have new photos, for example. So there is no need to use uh, CC Photo every day, but uh, there is a need to use CC Photo for example ten. 15 times per year. In two months, we cannot now tell you how often he will use it, but uh, the feedback is great. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm most interested in. Like uh, being a customer-centric company, especially with something like this is really important. So 
in the future. <laughs> I'm, I would be eager to hear this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so we can yeah. now move to the yeah, second company. I'd like to call on stage Help Race. Welcome. Here is it. Two minutes. Just help rate. Help rate. Yes. So we need help with presentation. Help rate. Yeah. You should. No, it's, it's a mix of things. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here today and uh, to pitch HelpRace. HelpRace is a customer service software. It's a complete solution to, uh, everything, for everything you need for great customer support. There are over 500,000 new businesses starting in America each month. And uh, to really set yourself apart, you, really, you, have, uh, you only have pro your product, your price, and customer service. But if your customer service goes downhill, then uh, you really have no choice but to fail because uh, customer service is something that's projected to be very important in the future. Well, this is how uh, help race could be used in, this, in an everyday situation. So meet Misha from Ukraine. He uh, just got his new iPhone 6 and he bent it at a party. And now he uh, visits the store's uh, online portal because, you know, Apple doesn't sell iPhones here. So uh, he asks this question, how do I stra straighten my phone? And right away, we get an aggregate, aggregator that, that suggests problems, questions, ideas, and even suggests a knowledge-based article that you as a company get to upload to this portal. So Misha ends up finding his answer, he's happy, and he doesn't have to submit a request. So he, here are the pain points that we're trying to address. The first one is engagement of site visitors. Many people nowadays don't want to wait for an email representative to respond to the email. There are many cases they don't want to wait for a chat agent to sign on. They just want to find answers themselves. And the second one is businesses are pressured to, to drop down their ticket quantities. That's the second pain point. And the third one is the productivity of your agent. People, businesses again, always want to improve the productivity. They, they don't want uh, an agent just to wear a help, uh, a headset anymore. That agent has to be able to up, update uh, knowledge-based articles and participate in a community. And this is our solution. It basically addresses these pain points. Uh, we have a ticketing system, a community, a knowledge base, and a feedback widget that's right on your website. So you get to engage users right away. And that's all centered around our search. Because we all know that uh, people are too used to Google nowadays and they want to search first and then think about asking the question later. And uh, another thing that's worth mentioning is uh, we have a cloud platform for our, our hosting needs. Um, it's a fully scalable solution. It will, it will grow with your team. We have multiple spaces for product support. And uh, you get to see what's important. It's another great, great feature that we have. It lets you categorize the most frequently asked questions, suggested ideas that have been either ad uh, addressed or not addressed. And uh, again, it's an all-in-one solution. We have multiple product support, and we have an API for third-party integrations. Um, we are really targeting anybody. Uh, this is really great for any company out there that really wants to, to uh, grow in the direction that their customers want them to grow. Um, uh, we have about 300 signups. Uh, we have had no external funding, so we're not really answering to anybody at this point. And it's a quickly changing market. I mean. Uh, Two years ago, customer service was one thing. Tomorrow, it will be something I else. I think the toast I is apologize. Bit black now. Yeah, I apologize, but I have to interrupt okay, because no the time is over. All right. So, question okay. from the judges. Yeah. I, I don't know if it was the pleasure, but I had some experience with heading call centers in uh, Russia, and we had all these systems built ourselves. This is for small and medium enterprise, or? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, okay. We are, we are obviously we're targeting companies that are small and that are poised to grow. So, uh -huh. when you're growing. Uh, you want to you want to collect feedback, and you don't want to lose it, right? You want to the, the whole idea here is to build a community of users that will that will uh, just almost almost as if um, replace support. You know what very often lacks in the customer service uh, area is a quite flexible 
um, element where you can do gentle uh, either marketing questions or marketing triggered uh, proposals to make your call center not a cost center but a profit center. Yeah. Um, is there something in here that provides a pop-up like, okay, person, this person is a VIP, uh, certain RFM segmentation data that comes from maybe the, the marketing campaign management tool that would allow for uh, a call center agent to know that this person is calling, he has more right to give a discount or he should absolutely make sure this person is happy it's a VIP client yeah. or he always buys this, let's recommend something that's quite close to it. Well, what we have as part of our ticketing system is we have ticket triggers. Uh, we are able to uh, direct tickets based on uh, their tags or based on uh, if, if, it, if it's uh, a certain client. Uh, but uh, we, unfortunately, we have no integration at the moment. As in, you're probably talking about um, a pop -up. marketing. Mark, uh, you sit as a call center operator and you see, it's yeah. a bit like probably in McDonald's, like, oh, you have McNuggets, would you like a, a certain sauce with it? Maybe that's a yeah, pop-up yeah, yeah. or something, no, I don't no, know. Not at the moment, we, we don't have that at the moment. Uh, so we are, we I think that could make you very distinguished because every time we had to select tools for call centers, yep. this was something that was missing. Only IBM has it, so far as I know, uh, in their suite. So it, it's not hard to do because it's a CMSable pop-up. So you yep. can basically just have the team provide. Uh, never mind, but it, it, it could it, be. It's a great suggestion. Uh, I like it. Um. Was that the? <laughs> It's not me, it's not me. <laughs> no one knows what happened. Yeah. I'm not good at that. Still, though. it happened, yes. So you have 300 signups. Uh, yes. When do you launch? We launched uh, about uh, a month ago. Uh, we've developed, we fully developed it, and we've launched it, but we haven't had much of a, much of a boost in marketing and, and spreading the word. And, and how much are you charging? We are, we are free for three agents. If you have three agents, it's free, but the fourth agent will be charged uh, $18 a month per agent. So, uh, you know, it really depends on the, how big your team is. Okay, so I'm interested about your sales strategy. I know we spoke yesterday, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd like to continue speaking to you, but um, okay. I'd, I'd be really interested to hear, like, your sales strategy. And you have no funding, so do you have a plan, plan for this in the future? Uh, we, we're really open to suggestions. We're, we're open to uh, investors, uh, but at the moment, uh, we're just uh, we're just slowly but surely moving along, and uh, this is this is where we're at. Uh, it really it really depends on uh, you know what what comes up to the table and uh, whether we like it or not. So, right. No, I, I agree that customer service is in is in uh, is up next in line for an area that could be disrupted. Yeah, uh, I agree, and uh, I definitely I know it's a competitive market, but I I definitely think that in in this sphere there's no such thing as competition. It's, it just, it just pushes the bar up higher. That's what I think. Okay. But, sorry, we're running out of time. So thank you very much for the question, for the explanations. We can move uh, to the next pitch. So third pitch. We have fours here. Also with a glass of wine, which is always very helpful. <laughs> you probably need this. No, I don't need no? this. No? Okay. Almost, it's coming. A few seconds more. That's pretty artistic, though. Here's it. Please go when you're ready. Okay. Hi there. Uh, let me introduce the force, the project of wearable device for gesture recognition. We all are living in 21st century. It's a time when dialogue is possible not only between two peoples, but between, uh, between people and their gadgets. Nevertheless, there is no multi-purpose device for controlling all of them. This problem is currently solved by Mayo and uh, well-known Leap Motion, but both of them are under development. That is why today we introduce a new generation in managing personal devices or any electronic device with gestures, the force device in form of elongated cuff for gesture recognition and recognition of emotional statement of a person. 
our device has a wide sphere of application. Managing in games without bonding to any cameras, any fixed point, managing presentation like me now, watch this, and uh, the most interesting feature, safety of kids. For example, if your kids get scared or get suffocated, you will know that first immediately uh, with notification on your smartphone. Our device uh, is really wearable, you see? It's like a suit, so uh, it's very comfortable in use. It's equipped with non-contact charging battery and Bluetooth. By the way, according to Google Analytics, uh, the market of wearable devices is rapidly growing. It means only one. During this very presentation, all over the world, about 200 wearable devices were sold. Current status of project, the prototype is done and works really good. The site is done and patterns are done too. Meet our team, uh, we are 12 developers from Kyiv Polytechnic Institute. And if you want to try this like me now, and uh, if you have any questions for me, please feel free to ask. Thank you very much. Thanks for that presentation. I actually understood why you didn't need this. I was yes. wondering why. Now I know. The wine is she better. Has the force. So, um, questions. These patents. Is it Ukrainian patents or uh, what Ukrainian is it? What is it exactly you managed to? Uh... Uh, in Europe and Ukraine. Uh, sorry. Does it work? I don't know yes. why it happens. Okay. It's a very uh, dangerous toasting sorry. session. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are working on... There's too much vibe in here. That's why it happens, you know? Uh, we are working on getting patterns in USA now, right, right now. So. Are, are you funded? Yes. How much? Uh, not it's uh, under conversation. Okay. And there, uh, it's not yet done. It's under construction. Are there, uh, sorry? Are you funded? Did you get any money raised or...? Uh, yes, we have pre-seed round of in the station. Okay. okay. Hmm. Uh, where would it be possible to do all of this just with your mobile device and not having to carry this? Maybe, maybe everybody has. I think their mobile device never further away than one and a half meters from them, like 95% of the time. So maybe if you just swipe with your mobile phone and you do the same thing, could that be possible? Or with your iWatch or something? Sorry, game. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll I'm speak. sorry, I just look nervous. So. I'm just wondering, don't you have a feeling that this element itself could also be integrated in a wearable other device, kind of uh, that you maybe have yes, a piece of hardware? Yes, it can be integrated in even in clothes. You see. Aha. Uh -huh. But then you need to get one in every sweater, or? Yes. Uh, okay. You touch this. Okay. How much uh, does it cost? Uh, you see, here is prototype, and uh, our device will cost about uh, two hundred dollars only, or oh, maybe even one hundred for you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we can negotiate a bit further, right? <laughs> See what happens. Uh, it, it's interesting, but uh, do you think it will become a bit smaller, or is this really? It will the be size smaller. Here, here is only prototype. It will okay. be much more smaller. Okay. I'm still a bit surprised how you managed to get a patent on that, but because there's others that have already done something similar. But uh, uh, here's a, a unique um, number of sensors in this device. Uh, we uh, deals with uh, myography. Do you know what this? Uh, it's um, tracking signal from muscles. That is why we can uh, recognize uh, not only gestures of hand, but only an arm and even every finger all here. Okay, so cool. that is why this device is really unique. Uh, last question. Uh, the, the, the quickness of processing of the movement, is it, uh, uh, when you do this, th does it take like one millisecond or how quick can you? It's very fast, so you okay. can so I show you? Okay, then very, very last question. It's Bluetooth connected, right? So you need... Yes, it is Bluetooth connected, uh, and it's about uh, 20 meters. You and can stand anywhere. And the battery? Uh... Uh, battery, uh, you see, here uh, we are about 12 hundreds. 12 what? Uh, tw 12, hour, 12, 12 hours, hours. Okay. sorry. Uh, here, cool. and it still works. 
Okay, I like the fact that you have IP. That's uh, really nice. And next generation will be interesting to see. Hopefully it's, hopefully it's smaller. Uh, can you talk about strategic partnerships that you have, uh, specific areas you want to go into? You mentioned safety. But with future, future partnerships, where do you see yourself in six months? Uh, yes, everything. Uh, it will be divided into two devices, one for kids and another one for um, early adopters of this uh, device. So for geeks, mainly, maybe. This right. is our strategy. But other, other businesses that want to partner with you, do you have any, have any contracts or do you have anything signed in, in terms of uh, future products down the road? Or are you going to do all the product development in-house and launch your own and do your own marketing campaigns? Sorry, again. Are you going to license your technology or are you going to do everything in-house? Your, your, your technology. Are you going to license this in house? Are you going to license this out to other businesses? Or are you going to do everything in-house in terms of product development? Uh, we're still thinking about it. So we, we don't know yet. OK. Uh, you see? Or she doesn't know yet. It's, so, it's something like uh, to really consider if you want to work with other businesses, more established companies, or if you want to work with uh, if you want to do everything in-house and bring a team in. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Samsung uh, wants to integrate this in their systems and we still think uh, if it is possible, we'll work with Samsung or maybe we'll work alone. Okay, in future, in future presentations, just say Samsung's interested in working with us and this is like, uh, it's, it's nice. Yeah. Thank you. My advice is to not to try to do it yourself uh, because I've seen one of my portfolio companies burn millions of euros because of the fact that they wanted to do it themselves. Why does Apple use Foxconn? It's apparently only Sony and one other player in the world that try to do all the hardware manufacturing in-house in electronics. So maybe with this it's a bit different, but watch out when you think that you can do it all yourself and all of a sudden you get stuck for cash flow issues or whatever. Uh, these guys had a beautiful product, but ran out of money because they started setting up their own operations in China and so watch out please. Thank you. Thank you very much. So fourth company, we have Hive here. I'm slightly scared of the microphone right now. Sorry Don't about be. that. We'll be fine. Right, okay. Sorry. I'll give you Hive. Hi guys. Hi, everyone. Um, I'll give you a fact, okay? We live in a cruel world, right? Everyone wants to own something, a piece of you, right? Facebook wants to own your identity. Um, you know, Foursquare wants to own your location. Well, Google probably wants to own your soul, as far as I know. But at Hive, we don't want to own anything. We want to encourage. We want to encourage your movement. We want to encourage your social interaction. And we want to encourage you to use Hive and keep on using Hive every day. What is Hive? Have a look on the screen. Um, the interface is all too familiar. Uh, if you've ever used Google Maps or Apple Maps or any kind of uh, mobile map, you'll recognize it. You log in, you're a dot on the map. We take your GPS location. We also support IPS, different versions of it. And you arrive at a special world, a new dimension. In this dimension, you have social function. You have different interactive walls. You have ge geo-locked message boards and everything. Uh, in, the, in that world, basically, there are different levels of privacy. There are public walls, there are public message boards, there are private ones, there are shared ones where you can share it with your friends or with anyone with tokens and passwords. But you have more. You have virtual objects. Think of it this way. Think of it as a quest. That little dot over there, me being that blue dot over there, could be anything. It could be a file. It could, could be a coupon. It could be money, which we support. You can share money with your wife and, and lock it to her hairdresser. So basically, she can't pop around the corner and buy her a perfume with that money. She can only spend it at the hairdressers. That could be a trigger. That could be a reminder. We support three kinds of reminders here as well. We support usual, your conventional reminders. We support GPS-activated reminders. And we support person-triggered reminders. That would be triggered by another Hive user being in a close proximity with you. We support group reminders, basically a reminder or a file transfer or anything, any action activated when a group of certain people is at a certain place. Basically, that's Hive for you. Now, two things. We have unique monetization, B2B and B2C, and we have unique viral marketing campaign. Why I'm saying that, ask me about it, because I'm out of time. 
Yeah. Thank you. You are. Thank you very much. Good. Question time? So just a comment. I wasn't sure what you were doing until 90 seconds into the pitch. Great. Okay. So just uh, really straightforward, just say we're social encouragement app yep. where friends can encourage other friends to go do things. Yep. And then you have the minute and a half to answer everything else. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. So this is, this is just so a, a five-minute pitch. I just yeah, yeah. messed them up. Yeah. <laughs> so can you explain to me your, your business-to-business model? Business to business model is very simple. It uh, basically makes use of our advantage that we can reach your customer, our user, anywhere, at any place, at any time. Information matters not only locked to time, but also to a place and people's willingness to accept, willingness to accept that information. Basically, you can brand uh, a personal wall that I've set up with, only with my wife at home. Basically, if you're a mobile carrier, you can brand it and you know, I'll be aware of you. You can basically throw around virtual objects, as many as you like. Those could be coupons. Those could be your presentations that give you money. Basically, uh, also you can lock a certain geographical place. For example, um, you're a local business, right? Um, you're a milk merchant. There are two milk merchants in that village. You basically you can lock all Hive advertising onto your milk merchant for a year. And other milk merchants won't be able to do that. Uh, basically, we can use any of our functionality. We can use our triggers, our reminders, and give them B2B. So basically, um, the last thing I want to tell you about, uh, basically, even before, even before we release, and we release in mid-November on two platforms, iOS and Android, um, we already have offers from different local businesses. Uh, they're willing to pay money to get integrated into that map environment. Because once people start using it, you know, it'll, 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 get, it'll get a tight competition to... Uh, we also have an app purchases, by the way, so B2C is covered as well. Um, marketing, interested? <laughs> yeah, marketing, sale, sales specifically is what I would... Right, so I'll give you a sales on. pitch, right. Um, basically, we have, as far as I know, the only app in the world that's willing to give every new customer, every new user, $100 just because they joined. And here's one catch. The system will automatically, using our AI, will place it somewhere in the world for you to pick up as a virtual object. Then, say you're in Kiev, it, it might place it in Paris, it might place it in Rio de Janeiro, it might place it in Frisco, it might place it in Kiev. Um, it's based on a simple concept. Our customer acquisi acquisition value has to be $1, we decided so, right? So 99 per people will get it somewhere far away. One person will get it nearby. Virality proved. Two comments. First one, uh, it's a lot of could, could, could. Does this mean that you're going to kind of give a very raw thing and just hope that the users will figure out what they want to do, or you haven't really no. figured it out yourself no. yet? No. Uh, basically, what we're going to do between now and when the 2.0 version, which we're going to release to the mass public, is going to be available, which is roughly a month from now, uh, we're going to start populating that world. We're already doing that. Uh, we're going to use Foursquare experience with their mayorship. We're going to put in every single city, big city in the world, we're going to put public message boards and walls on the places of interest and high density. And we're going to let the user, the first user to arrive will be the mayor. Um, basically, we're going to throw around virtual objects. We're going to populate that world. And then we're going to introduce our features one by one as users come in. So we don't want the user to get lost with the number of features that we have. So basically, at first, you have message board, chat rooms, and triggers. Then we add something, then we add something, then we add something. Okay, gotcha. Now, the thing is, I've got the feeling that I would be surprised if there's not at least 1,000 startups across the world doing pretty much this. And I'm wondering whether maybe for you it would be sexier to take the technology itself and start to make it extremely easy as a service to be integrated in a lot of apps, which actually a Dutch startup is well, doing. We're, we're doing API. We're doing API basically because uh, we thought of... And, uh, but even now, you need, now you need to develop a brand. You need to convince it, people to exactly. download it. it, it exactly. You just have yeah. huge, for instance, daily deals sites that just No, say, no, okay, we're, we're thinking about it. We're thinking about it, and we're going to be integrated. So you could, you could, right? So, well... To be honest, I mean, we have one weak point. I mean, I can be honest with you. you have one um, what, sorry? We have one weak, weak spot, basically, and that being is uh, we use different map services, right? We use uh, Google Maps, Apple Maps, Yandex Maps, and so on and so forth. If the market um, is as viral and as big as we think, if that thing goes viral, they'll kill us quite quickly. 
Uh, but we follow that. Basically, we're using the navigation maps. We're buying them. Um, so in case they decide to kill us, we're just going to make our own map. <laughs> and that's it. Okay, well, I don't think we have time now to really discuss how to convince the entrepreneurs to kind of use the tool, because I think that's going to be a nightmare with sales guys having to convince restaurant change, whatever. You're kind of in the catch-22 situation. And uh, I doubt you can now kind of calm me down and say that there is a golden solution you have? Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a long discussion. I mean, we have solutions, but, uh, so you, you know, you we, we can be here all night. You so. could, right? You could. Uh, well, hopefully. Okay. And okay. very, very last one, Hive. Is it Hive.com or Hive what? Uh, it'll be thehiveapp.com. What? Thehiveapp.com. The Hive with the article. The Hive. Thehiveapp.com. The Facebook. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Obviously, but I mean, we d we decided to change the name at first, but then we thought, no, if we are as arrogant as we think we are, we'll try to become the Hive, and okay. if we don't become the Hive, we don't need the Sorry, WW I have to name. Interrupt the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so the fifth pitch we have here with us, GP. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for your invitation on the stage. Uh, let's start. Can we? Okay. So, what is going on in application to person messaging market right now? Could you imagine that business will spend about 70 billions of dollars on the SMS text messages in 2016? That's a ridiculous amount of money. And this market currently is on the cusp of a big transformation. Uh, business is still relying on outdated old uh, technologies like email and SMS for uh, messaging, while the people around the world quickly adopt uh, modern mobile and wearable devices. Push notifications uh, was invited especially to this case. Uh, they are modern and brand new way to communicate uh, with the audience of your mobile apps. They have been designed especially for m mobile uh, phones and other devices. So they have lowest uh, battery usage possible, and they allow to analyze uh, user's behavior after the message is delivered. That's why we created GP. Uh, GP is a cloud-based push messaging infrastructure and delivery platform. We help companies to migrate from this old standard email and SMS notifications to brand new uh, smart cross-platform push notifications with easy integration and low cost. We have an SDK to, for integration into existing applications and also we have a special app framework for businesses who don't have an app yet. Uh, our competitors are large infrastructure companies as well as some companies from mobile marketers market. And one of our competitive advantages are that first that we have uh, developed a specific asynchronous technology which allows us to keep our self costs uh, very low. And the second is that we are focused only on push notifications that allow us to support every platform, every type and subtype of push notifications we even support Chinese Android devices and browser push notifications for Chrome and Safari browsers. Comparing to our main competitors of... Uh, I'm sorry, but I have to interrupt you because the time is over. Okay. So, question time from our judges. Uh, you said competitor is Parse, who were acquired by Facebook. Yes. Are you a yes. bit afraid? Huh? Are you not afraid that they are so big and that they... Uh, we are actually this much better. not afraid of Parse because you know that Parse is a backend as a service platform. Their main uh, oh. value is selling the database management tool and APIs, and as well, push notifications for mobile devices. But they are not focused, uh, focused on push notifications, so they support currently only iOS, Android, and I believe not a long time ago started to support Windows Phone, while we support uh, also desktop notifications and some other uh, services. They are try to disrupt uh, standard hosting. That's their case. We are trying to disrupt SMS and email notifications as a way of communicating with audience. 
uh, why when I'm in in Russia, I see that Beeline actually through agencies already for two or three years has these push notifications as an advertising material. So you receive some sort of push message from uh, directly from the telco provider. Do you feel that that's something that could be spreading? Uh, no, I don't think so. We are focused on push notifications, uh, not for uh, just marketing or just a spam. We focus it on completely new way of communicating with audience, and uh, these push notifications that we support, uh, they uh, need customer to allow company to send them. So I think the marketing, maybe remarketing, is the case, but not just uh, sending spam-like messages. Uh, so very quickly, I think we're running out of time. No, no, please. Um, I, I think for your presentation, it would be it would be awesome sorry, to see a demo, yeah. or at least see see what it actually is, because uh, it, it just seems like you're getting a push notification and it's helping with advertising from within an app. Yes, uh, thank you for this question. If uh, you allow us, I, we can uh, show it on the device near our boot to everyone who are interested actually in this technology. Here is our boot right here near the stage with this hook. And uh, we can show on the iPhone device how it's look like, how it will be look like. Right, but next time you give a presentation, just show this and make it super simple, and then talk about talk about your marketing strategy, talk about when you're going to launch. Have you launched? How many customers do you have? Yes, uh, we have launched uh, like some time ago. We have one enterprise customer already, and uh, a bunch of developers, and also the thousands of. Uh, Hundreds, hundreds of thousands of devices uh, already tracking and using our technology. We actually have uh, nice traction at this moment. I'd also put that in. Very important. Yes, thank, thank you. Good presentation. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Yeah, if you have another one. No go. further questions. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. So I would actually make a very big applause to our judges. Please. Thank you very much. The pitches, the startup toasters are over. We had 18 companies pitching, all very interesting projects, like ranging from different sectors, different industries, different stages, extremely interesting. I'm um, really glad you were here. I hope you enjoyed the pitches. Uh, now I'll leave the stage to the hackathon once again, because the winner will be announced. And then in a few minutes more, we'll be back here for the announcement of the winner of the Startup Toasters. Thank you very much.